UFC Fight Night Burns vs. Brady just ended, and it was all around a great, very entertaining card. Sean Brady proved that he can dominate Gilbert Burns in a far more impressive fashion than contenders like Jack Della Maddalena. Steve Garcia proved he's a problem at featherweight, and Natalia Silva proved that she is so emotion, but that does not stop her from beating the best, and she is coming for that title. I need you speaking Portuguese today. I am so emotion. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Where are the Mexicans at? Where are my Mexicans at? Before we get into it, I will just do a quick overview of all my picks as well as shout out the topology winner if you're only interested in particular uh, breakdowns for specific fights, you can jump to those in the timestamp. But overall, I went nine and three. The only fights I got wrong was that tough Ramaska versus Fletcher one. Great dog win for Fletcher there. And I got Gabriel Dos Santos versus Lima wrong. And I also got Vanessa Demopoulos versus Amarim wrong. But I had two dogs cash on the card in Yanel Ashmoos and Chris Padilla. So my dog's always hitting and I completely swept the main card. Bunch of perfect picks there. So it was all around a great night for me. And let me give a shout out to the two winners from this week's Topology Group. Let me play joke or me play joke, sorry. And Sarah Q, if I'm saying that right. Great picks, guys, as well as everyone else here. If you are interested in joining our topology group, it's just a fantasy pick'em group on that topology website. Free to play, free to join. We have close to a thousand members, so one of the biggest si uh, groups on the site. And it's just a fun way to compete. Uh, you pick who you think is going to win, how they're going to win, and you get points. And you compete within that group as well as site-wide and you get all sorts of like little awards and bonuses and points and stuff like that. So if you are interested in joining, you can find the link in the description of this video. You can also find the link to my live stream that I did for the event if you want to see my live reactions. And if you want to hop into my live stream for UFC Noche, UFC 306, I'll be live next weekend at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Let's start out the breakdown. We'll start with the main event and work our way down the card. Gilbert Burns versus Sean Brady. This was a shutout dominant performance from Sean Brady. And I don't really like to hear the cope that Gilbert Burns is washed. Was Gilbert Burns washed when he was out striking and beating Jack Della Meda on the scorecards over three rounds and Jack Della Maddalena had to desperately throw a flying knee to knock him out to win that fight. No, no one was cracking crap about him then, but suddenly he's fallen over the hill just because he's losing to Sean Brady and you didn't pick him or something. Or like you thought, like Gilbert Burns was competitive for that entire fight, but he did get shut out. And that's why that shows Sean Brady's level. It was a close competitive fight, but Sean Brady was doing everything he needed to to win every single round. And he looked good everywhere in that fight. He was giving Gilbert Burns tons of looks on the feet, tons of looks in the grappling. He was much stronger than him in the grappling, which a lot of people did not expect. And honestly, he looked great. I think he would give Ian Gary a very tough fight, and that's who he called out. Ian Magado Cherry, or whatever the F your name is. Uh, great call out by Sean Brady. I think he should have called out Jack Della Maddalena personally, because it's a more winnable fight for him. Jack Della Maddalena is not some crazy power puncher. I don't know why he has that reputa reputation. He hasn't really finished anyone in the UFC with his hands. He wobbled Randy Brown and had to choke him out. He needed to fly knee Gilbert Burns. He couldn't hurt Kevin Holland whatsoever. Stuff like he's not this guy. He's not the guy people say he is. Sean Brady's that guy. Sean Brady ate a flying knee off of Gilbert Burns. Sean Brady ate Gilbert Burns' biggest overhands and hooks, and Gilbert Burns can throw with heat. Sean Brady has a good chin. He folded to Bilal Muhammad because he'd never lost a fight before, and he'd never been in a moment in a fight that he was getting bullied by a guy like Bully B. Bilal Muhammad took little nerd Sean Brady to class, wedged him, Toughened him up and turn him into the man he is today. Sean Brady would beat these other top contenders in Ian Gary and Jack Della Maddalena, in my personal opinion. 
probably Shavkat as well. He's the real deal. He deserves the hype. He deserves that rematch with Bala Muhammad. For real though, I'm sick and I'm not going to entertain any type of discussion that Jack Della Maddalena's win over Gilbert Burns is more impressive than Sean Brady. Sean Brady shot out Dorino Burns, 50-45 the guy, when Gilbert Burns is giving Hamza a really tough fight on the feet, when he's beating Jack Della Maddalena on the feet. Sean Brady showed levels. Sean Brady showed championship material in this fight. And the fact he only has one loss, standing TKO to the current champ, Bully B, Sean Brady has proven to me that he is a top contender. This was a great performance by him. And another person who had a great performance on the card was little Nat Silva, Natalia Silva, the most wholesome WMMA fighter in the promotion. When half these other women win a fight and celebrate, they start shaking their booty all over the place. I don't understand the subconscious impulse to feel happy as a as a female fighter and celebrate and want to celebrate by shaking your thing. Why don't you try hopping around, cheering, scream, crying, crying, screaming, flopping in between the two, laughing, smiling, frowning, sobbing, all sorts of emotion. Try being emotion, not slut. Yeah, I am so emotion. Uh, sorry. Wow. Talia Silva is such a wholesome girl. Good Christian woman as well. Very, very devout Christian. May her sister rest in peace, and I hope she finds peace with that loss. And I hope she finds success against the next woman she fights, because she is a real problem. She demonstrated an amazing ability to work from that mid-range and really just mitigate any of Andrade's offensive power at that point like Natalia Silva Andrade had nothing for Silva it was a it was a great shutout from Silva as well I believe she got 30 27 there almost um I, I think the only round you really could have given her Andrade was like the first because it was really close on strikes and Andrade was controlling more but honestly the variety of strikes and stuff from Natalia Silva she was just whooping her up, styling on her. The legs were crazy active. Someone in my chat said she looked like a prime Barbosa, and it's true. She's straight up Ed Ed Son Ed Sona Barbosa Maxine or something. She's looking great. Uh really great personality too and stuff like that. She's always an entertaining post fight, right? With her uh back and forth bubbly, like manic mood swing stuff. I like it. I like watching her. She's a great uh, addition and uh, she's gonna be a problem for the flyweight champ right we have steve garcia versus kyle nelson as our featured fight and steve garcia got the first round ko like he seemingly is impossible to stop from getting however there's a little bit of controversy this with this kyle nelson's wife has actually come out and posted a picture and asking for the fight to be overturned because of that massive goose egg on the back of kyle nelson's head which uh, they are attributing to a back-of-the-head elbow that landed. Unfortunately, that's not the Mohawk line. I like Kyle Nelson a lot. He was scrambling around in a finishing sequence, whereas, like, you can't turn your head as a guy throws a one-two at you, and if he punches you in the back of the head, it's not a foul. Like... It's totally allowed. And that's the difference. So it's not a comparable thing to a low blow. A low blow, even if it happens in like an accident, like the person moves into it, you have to pause the action or an eye poke because those are debilitating strikes in that sense. It wasn't a mohawk line blow. It was too over here. So it was technically behind that ear. I think it's a fine legal blow. And it's definitely not a blow that you should be overturning a fight for. And I like Kyle Nelson a lot. I like Steve Garcia a lot. When you're getting ground and pounded like that and you're rolling around like that you're bound to get some shots in the back of the head it's not like it was one of those sequences where the guy had rolled over flattened out and the guy was like pounding out the back of his head like robocop versus dennis tolulian where he landed like three four strikes to the back of the head and it's like pause the action what the heck's going on this was just one se shot in a sequence of other shots that were uh, attempting to finish the fight steve garcia did finish the fight i don't personally think there's any controversy to it i think it's a fine shot and um, a good win from Steve Garcia. And I like both these guys. These are both great guys, uh, Kyle Nelson and Steve Garcia. Great personalities, fun fighters. Both are going to uh, do good things in the UFC. Kyle Nelson will bounce back, absolutely. I'd probably pick him as a dog the next time he fights because uh, I was going to pick him to beat Kelvin Cater. This is just an awful matchup for like, really anyone right now. Steve Garcia has a problem. He has insane power, speed's problem. 
his like tenacity, his grit, just like his ability to find and place that shot is great. He's going to be a problem for a lot of these uh, featherweights. I'd see him beating like Diego Lopez and stuff. I just maybe not like the Ortegas, the Ayers, the uh, uh, Ilias, obviously. But he's good. And I could be proven wrong with Steve Garcia as the future unfolds. So I'm helped to see a lot from both Kyle Nelson and Steve going forward. All right, we have Matt Schnell versus Cody Durden. And Cody Durden got the second round sub early. And you know, Matt Schnell fought a decent round in the first. And I love Matt Schnell because he's a glass chin brawler who actually has a decent like jujitsu base, but he'd rather just sit in the pocket and strike with people who have better chins than them. And in terms of Cody Durden, I wouldn't say Cody Durden actually has like better striking them, but it was so funny because Cody Durden was just like, I'm knocking this guy out and was coming out, throwing so many like haymakers overhands. But I think by the end of that first round, he was realizing he's like, crap, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually put out Schnell because you need to have good play shot to put out Schnell. It's not like he's like, it's not like he's actually like a chinny bum who'd get knocked out by bumping his chin off a door or something like that. As we can see from Durden, Durden wasn't really having the best success and even was trying to uh, start to string together the high kick into his combos by the end of that fight. Uh, first round, sorry, and no. But just runs out in the start of the first, gets Schnell down, wraps up a, a ninja choke, I believe it was, taps him out, double hand tap from Schnell. Schnell was cooked, dude, and uh believe he retired. I don't think he should have because, he, once again, he gives us really fun fights. He's a glass chin brawler who trusts in himself to a delusional degree. He always gives us fun fights. That was a fun fight. Keep the guy around. Like, I, if I was the UFC, I'd be like, hey, Chanel, you don't need to go anywhere, bro. This is flyweight, first of all. You can sit around and still get potentially go on a run. You should be like a two-fight win streak. Besides that, before match Chanel was the Trevor Peak and Yanalash Moose fight first uh, fight on the main event. I picked Yanel Schmooz as that dog, and he got it done. It was a pretty boring fight, apart from some moments there where Trevor Peak was kind of blitzing and giving it his all. But, uh, you know, Yanel Schmooz kind of kind of took him to school, exposed those holes in Trevor Peak's game. And that's what I was saying in my predictions video, that Yanel Schmooz is the better, more well-rounded MMA fighter. He only really has that one loss that may have not even happened if he hadn't have had that injury early on in the fight. And yes, he fought a boring fight. What do you want him to do? Sit there in the pocket with a crazy blitzer uh not even blitzer like hammer fist spammer win hook spamming tennessee chat who doesn't care to take five to give you a hammer fist back like i don't know what people want yanala schmooze fought a smart fight there and shut down trevor peak so good win from yellow and ash moose and uh great dog pick great main event uh main card sorry for rigo swept the whole thing bunch of perfect picks on there with main event co-main event card opener. I won't spend the most time yapping about the prelims, but there's definitely some highlights on here I want to talk about because it was a pretty good prelims for the fight night. Wrong Zhu versus Chris Padilla was our featured prelim and it delivered. Holy crap did it deliver. Chris Padilla looked excellent and as a dog uh, hitting for Rigo, hitting for a lot of people. I know a lot of people trusted in Chris Padilla to get that done over Rong Zhu and we were all right, man. And holy crap, I've never seen a single more effective elbow. That's the highlight of this fight. Chris Padilla landed one slashing elbow basically across the eye of Rongju in the second round it was and uh the eye just <laughs> five times its size they had to call in the doctor uh, and they were like no like you literally cannot see at all like this is crazy I've just never seen a more effective elbow in terms of like he only had to throw it once only had to throw it once he didn't have to like build up any damage, had, didn't have to create a cut, didn't have to wait for that cut to open up and bleed into the eye. It was just one crazy elbow and holy crap. Uh, but Chris Padilla was actually fighting a really good fight before that. Um, he was being very defensively aware. He had a great guard, great distance management. And uh, was uh, both these guys were fighting a good round. Like Rong Zhu was game in that first round as well. Um, man. Chris Padilla just got it done as that dog. So great win from Chris. Isaac Dolgarian versus Moreau. No, yeah, see, this is a bit of a one. Like, Isaac Dolgarian was, like, the biggest favorite type thing, right? He was, like, a minus 1,000, minus whatever favorite. Uh, and fought arguably like it, like a minus 500 or something, right? He didn't fight, like, crazy dominant. He didn't get the finish in the first round. But it's not like he didn't 10-8 the guy. He 10 8 the guy. He took like one strike from Moreau in the first round, and I don't know if any in the second. He was completely dominating him. Look, total strikes. 
102 to 22, significant strikes, 41 to 3. They have the stats here. Two takedowns. That's all he needed. Bunch of control time. Yeah, it wasn't the most uh, in, uh, fun because it's not necessarily the most fun to see a guy basically big brother a guy and not do the most damage to him uh, as he's just covered up on the ground, basically getting beat up. Tough guy, Moreau, but didn't have anything for Dolgarian. And Dolgarian able to get that uh, submission in the second round. Good for him. Like, I don't think he lost any stock or anything uh, from that. He did what he had to do. So, and it was totally dominant. And he 10 8 the guy and then finished him in the second. Uh, Felipe Dos Santos versus Andre Lima. Andre Lima lost stock, in my personal opinion. This wasn't the greatest fight. The first round was pretty fun. But then it just pretty much got to this kind of like boring grapple grape and a lot of clinch control from Lima. And Felipe Dos Santos just kind of gassed. And uh, Lima is to me like he's the one who's lost stock. Uh, of any of the like prospects or people on this card of the winners because he just didn't look good and Dos Santos didn't look any better than he normally does and Dos Santos is kind of at that level he's like solidified himself as like you know kind of like an outside the rankings gatekeeper of flyweight and Lima is struggling with this guy struggling with Mitch Raposo before you know having like a split decision with Mitch Raposo close-ish fight like losing that first round and then just like not being able to really do much to Felipe Dos Santos I don't know I'm not impressed with this Lima guy um I think he's gonna lose to many of these other actual good flyweights all right we've got Yi Zha versus Gabriel Santos Gabriel Santos absolutely just beat the crap out of this guy he styled on him in every possible facet of the fight game right completely outstriking him on the feet and in, in every level head body legs Really hard strikes. He literally Sparta kicked the guy across the cage at one point. It was so sick. He switch kick, like switch front kicked him in the chest, and Yija went flying like ten feet. It was one of the uh, strongest uh, front kicks I've seen. It was sick. He tried to get it off again. He dropped him with a front kick to the face at one point, and then he just decided to switch it up and be like, "I'm just gonna grapple, grape you, and mog you, ground and pound, beat the crap out of you." Right. And uh, uh, credit to this Yija guy. He's an absolute dog. Some of these Chinese guys have such heart and grit and stuff because no matter how hard, it's not like Gabriel wasn't working the finish. He was. And he worked in multiple different ways to try to get that finish. It's just this Yijia guy is way too tough. Um, but good win from Gabriel Santos there. And uh, great heart from Yijia. Like, I, I don't mind Yijia. We can see him again. Then we had Gabriel, or sorry, Jacqueline Amarin versus Vanessa Demopoulos. Vanessa Demopoulos uh, is actually, like, really crap. She got dog-walked by Amarin. Uh, Amarim, little cheater, I will say. I don't like, like, the egregious cheating, especially when you're, like, winning over someone. It's one thing to, like, be cheating if you're losing because it's, like, if you're, you know, shows a, shows a winner's spirit. But when you're beating someone, you don't need to be glove-grabbing them like that. And she was fully hooked up in the gloves. They let a lot of cheating go. And, you know, what's funny is, like, I think the the, the one, like, Steve Garcia is getting some flack and for the back of the headshot when there were people, like, egregiously cheating, like Lima also cage-grabbing, um... Who else was cheating? I can't remember off the top of my head, but there was other like egregious cheating on this card that wasn't called. Whereas I don't think Steve Garcia definitely didn't intentionally hit Nelson in the back of the head. Jacqueline Emmerich was intentionally hooking the gloves and then used that to roll to an armbar. It wouldn't have changed that much. I don't think so. She probably still would have finished Vanessa in that round, if not in the second round. So whatever. Andre Petrovsky versus Dylan Budka. Uh, Andre Petrovsky taking the decision. This was not the most entertaining fight at all, but it was nice to see Andrew Petrovsky actually fight like smart, fight like crisp and stuff like that. Like he was just fighting like very like measured, keeping that guard tight there, blasting out like some body kicks and stuff, like walking Dylan down, timing his shots very nicely and like waiting for his counters and stuff. And he really just showed that experience level over Dylan Budka. I think Dylan Budka can definitely improve because he's a, he's a really young guy. Um, he can get to like a Petrovsky or even better than Petrovsky scale level and uh, have some success in the UFC. So it's not too uh, too bad of a loss for the guy. It's a good learning experience. He lasted all three rounds. And then we have that Zygmatis Ramaska versus Nathan Fletcher fight. Great performance, to be honest, by uh, Nathan Fletcher, man. Underdog win, comeback, gritted out that uh, assault from Zygmatis and then ended up submitting him in the second round. And he like lost a good portion of that first round. It was a tough round. To score, I did give it to Fletcher because Fletcher ended in mount, ground and pounding Zygmatis, came out, repeat, boom, submission. So great win from him. That's all the fights on the card. Once again, I went nine and three. Two of my dogs, Padilla and Ashmoos Cash, well, my only dogs I picked, Padilla versus Ashmoos Cash, 
Only got three fights wrong there. Swept the entire main card. Perfect main event. It was a great, successful fight night. Really enjoyable. The fight stream itself, fight companion was fun. So once again, if you want to hop into my UFC Noche uh, live companion, you can find that next Saturday at 7.30 p.m. I'll be live. And let me know what you guys thought of this fight night. I'll be putting out a bunch of content for 306. So expect probably a video like today, Sunday, and then videos going forward. I'll be streaming a lot during the week as well. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like on it though. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and turn the bell notification on so you don't miss a single thing. I'd like to give a big thank you to all my channel members and a special thanks to my Lions here members. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And without all of you, the channel would not be possible. Dime, papi. Dime, mommy. <laughs>